Hey folks, Vortex here, I'm back with something a bit special. So this is my review of the Tangsu Zetian Wu, the Heyday edition. So obviously that's the Hawaii Bad Boy collab. And obviously mine's an early one, so I get a, I get a mouse pad, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, as usual, for all the disclaimers, I'd like to thank Lint Sol and Hawaii Bad Boy himself for arranging this sample for me to try it. So thank you very much, I do appreciate it, and this is a good one. Um, yeah, I was not paid to do this video, nor thoughts and opinions are my own. So obviously the box is on the uh, bigger side, so there's the brand in there. Specs, some QR codes, so obviously it's plain R, so it's a bit harder to power. So 14.5mm, it's meant to be an upgraded one over the original. 16 ohm impedance, sensitivity is 100, uh, and there's some information there, so... So it just folds open. Thank you very much for purchasing the Heyday edition, a collaboration. Sorry about that. It's just been a it's just been a text about the um the collaboration between the two owners. And yeah, so obviously I've I've only been using these very briefly, so I'll just get them out now. So here they are. Obviously some fingerprints because I'm used it. Or I think it's an all kind of metal shell. Same kind of design as before. Two pin, small lip on the nozzle. These are the tips it came with by default. So kind of a a uh, a wider ball, shall we say? Black casing, so it's a bit different over the original. There's a few changes and improvements over the original. So obviously you'd wrap them in there, put them in there. An upgrade from the original, so obviously it's the 4.4, 3.5 and 2.5 modular. Obviously I'll have a good look at that in a bit. Yeah, so there's the, uh, the different tips. So I've been briefly trying them with the balanced, the based enhancing and obviously you've got two foamies. The difference is the bore size technically. Um, I will show you in the next clip when I've graphed them and used them for much longer, but yeah. So yeah, that's what they look like. Another look with these bad boys. Uh, very, very nice build. There's a little bit of weight to them. And yeah, thanks, thanks you. So yeah, so, so I won't be raffling. So in the next clip, I'll obviously get to the review. I'll show you the tips properly so you can see the differences and I'll, uh, I'll show what this cable's like. And obviously graphing and all that good stuff. So I'll see you guys and gals in the future. Yes, yeah, so welcome to my review section of the uh, the Wu Heyday variant. And like I wanted to show you the tips. So here they are. These are the ones that was in the box that's classed as foams. So I wanted to show you that one there. <coughs> this is the base version. And this is the uh, balanced version. The difference is, so the, the bore is slightly smaller on the base one. See, so it's very slightly smaller. So yeah, that's just the differences really. But I mean, most of my testing was done this class with the phone one, but it is still silicone, so just remember that. And obviously this is the cable in use. So this is the 4.4. They did come with like a protective sleeve, I've already Obviously, I've took it off, and this is what it looks like. So, obviously, detachable. Takes a little bit of force, but not too bad. Obviously, you see, it's got like four pins because it's balanced. And yeah, obviously, it's quite large. Just bear that in mind. But obviously, quite a nice cable. Looks like a four core or something like that. Why split? Uh, chin slider is very stiff, which is useful. And yeah, so onto that your cables. So uh, that's what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so we take these. Uh, take these off. So yeah, quality cable and good tips. So and they got a good case. So let's get on to um, comfort to these. So obviously these are on the bigger side. And there's a comparison. I've got one of the OG ones here. See, so it's it's exactly it's the same. 
as you can see. Two two vents there compared to just a one. So apart from that, it's the same. So it's not too bad at all. So yeah, comfort on these, considering it's got that bit that sticks out, is actually fine. I, I was expecting um a lot more of a problem, shall we say, but it's actually <coughs> excuse me, it's actually fine really. Comfort wise over longer periods, a little bit fatiguing over long like a few hours, but you know for how long you're gonna use it for, it's fine really. See it's not too wide here, so it wasn't too bad at all. Now build, obviously you just saw the original. This is now I think these are full metal um construction. I will I will pull a image up in a bit so you can see kind of the comparisons. Actually I'll pull it up now so you can see what it looks like. So it's just a comparison between the original, as you can see, the tuning, the body, the colour, the driver. There is a few differences, some that you see, some that you don't see, but now it's a full aluminium body and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, and it's a $40 difference, it obviously depends where you buy it, so it's, that's not too, it's not too bad and you get multiple differences plus a new driver. So yeah, anyway, so you just saw the differences, I think it looks pretty... They are useful differences, so anyway. So resolution is very good. Obviously it's planar, so make sure you power it sufficiently. You don't need anything stupid, just a decent audio adapter is all you need, probably from what I've noticed. I've tried it with my J. Kelly AP90, <coughs> excuse me, and it was fine. The topping combo, well, it's all good. That's put The topping combo is way overkill for stuff like this, but yeah. Obviously a very good build, like I said, so anyway, so that goes with the pound sensitivity. These are not power, hard to drive. Like I said, any decent audio adapter, you should be fine. Apple adapter, maybe, you should be, you should be fine with stuff like that, but yeah. So micro details is very good. Now compared to the, uh, the OG one, it is, the clarity on this is better. <clears throat> Obviously I will do a comparison in a bit on the graph, but as a driver, as what it sounds like, it is clearer. It's a better product, sound-wise, but I'll talk about all that kind of stuff in a bit. Um, yeah, so isolation. Now, I found it, I don't know, average, shall we say, it's got multiple vents, but it's okay, you know, it depends if you're going to be taking this outside or on a buzz or anything like that. Personally, I won't. This is just for me to use at home. Cause I, I, I don't want to drop these because it's obviously the nice, so just bear that in mind. Um, stage was enough. It does. It does seem to like um, fall off a bit and then come back up. So the stage is not enclosed. It's enough. There's enough air for the, for make people happy. It just it drops off at tenish where you don't want it to. But apart from that, it's fine really. I was quite happy with it. Uh, anyway, yeah. So sound because that's what it's all about. I'll overlay the graph now so you can see what it looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, I've compared. I've got both. So I did buy the uh, the original, obviously, I think like mid twenty twenty two, and obviously this is a review one. So there are a few differences. So overall, it is a slightly more balanced sound, apart from the increase in clarity. So bass, there's a little bit less of it. But one one thing to note with the um, with the low end, with it being planar, it's fast. So that it depends on obviously what you're listening to, but it's the low end is solid. It's very fast. The bleed is nearly perfect from the mid low or the lower mid range, which I like. I don't always like when it's like thin, like it drops up too much. But I was actually quite happy with it. These probably won't be enough for base heads, so you might have to throw a bit of EQ at it. But out of the box, it is quite nice, and it does really drop off at all i was quite happy with it it just depends on what your genre is or genres because there's so many different type of music out there but i typically listen to electronic so i probably want a little bit more than this but throw a bit of eq at it and you solve it and yeah solid solid planar bass so it's fast uh, Mid-range, I found it quite smooth to be honest. I do like the overall, the upper gain, which is gradual, not just like like a cliff face. Um, I found it very clear. wasn't I didn't find it shouty or nothing like that. I was quite happy with 
So the very smooth gain region up towards the upper mids. Female vocals, I think, sounded great on this. So did male because it didn't set in thin at the bottom. Again, the original was like that, and this is going to morph the same. But very, very good. Mid range is super clean. It's very clear, clean. Um, doesn't really sound that coloured apart from the little bit of bleed at the bottom. But I like that because it stops sounding thin. Um, and the treble region, really. So <clears throat> compared to the original, it sounds slightly. It's a little bit more balanced. So I think some people said some of these are a bit shouty in the lower treble. Um, this kind of partly solves it. You can see at one part it's slightly over, then underbeat, then it's under. Um, again, I think the treble performance is very good. I'm glad that it is not any more, like I've said a few times with these planars. Like a little bit of restraint is useful to stop sibilance. And they don't and these to me don't really have don't have any sibilance. Instrument separation is great, everything's clear. All the instruments I found for like live tracks all have that they all have really good attack, they all feel real. Um which is I was quite happy with it. No, the thing is, there's no real downside to this. Obviously, the 8K is the peak from the coupler, like normal. Um, you can see over 10 that there's some peaks there, but the coupler's not accurate for that, so you have to bear that in mind. But yeah, treble's good. Everything's there. Everything's clear. There's no darkness or shout or sibilance or everything. It's, everything is what it's supposed to be, really. And I think that's, that's not much to say, really. It does everything... What I like. So conclusion, do I recommend these? Yes. If you've got the original, I don't if I don't know if it's really worth to go from the original to this to buy another one. But if you don't have the original model, then I I just recommend to go straight to this. Saves wasting more money. But yeah, um, I think it's a good pl good planer. Probably one of the best. Compared, to, I briefly tried it against the P1 Max. And this driver does seem better that they've used in this. It's probably the best technical planer I've tried out of all, all of them, I think. It's also the newest one. So, yeah, I'll probably end it there. Easy wreck, great planer. Does all my library well, which is mainly electronic. With a bit of pop music thrown in there. Techno, trance. Um, a bit of rap, a little bit of rap. Um, dance music. Bit of classical music, bit of folk music, stuff, just random stuff, and it seems fine. So, yeah, if you want to know anything particular, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty much it, but yeah. Uh, next video is the Khan. So, the next Hawaii, Hawaii bad boy one. I didn't plan it like this, but it's just next. So, yeah. See you guys in the next video. Take care.